and what is up guys it's Kovian here and welcome to Valeria's rating slash review believe it or not this is my second time recording this whole video because i had messed up my mic <laughs> yeah it's kind of insane um for something that is a mediocre as but that i think um i think she's kind of overshadowed by bruce and embla coming in so we just kind of forgot that they added a new esper in valeria shit i forgot up until today i wake up i'm thinking hey what should i do and then i began testing valeria in different places but this is on my test server account so most of this will be theory crafting and then the ratings in pve i've looked at all possible ways i could use it in pve and i've come to a conclusion the rating in addition here i'll be going through what she brings as usual some potential builds and reson talking about the resonances and what this i think about her so let's get into beginning thing what she brings to your team starting with what she brings to the team she comes with three buffs um i sort of forgot the speed buff here but she does have the speed up buff and then she has two silver debuffs the first one is snake shape basic ability has 30 percent damage this is her first skill the second one is power reserve and she is um her whole mechanic or gimmick is around this skill basically damage taken 50 percent less disappeared when attacks um this is not true it also disappears when it runs out because it has a cooldown it has like you know like how you have a 210 attack buff yeah this one is like 110 power reserve if your um your allies move if they have power reserve or even if she moves the power reserve gets removed which is um you know <laughs> kind of bad but uh here we are anyway uh, she comes with a speed down debuff um this comes from the same skill where she buffs her own speed uh so yeah uh, it's not much but i mean it's there <laughs> and um the speed buff doubles up as a speed buff increasing the number of turns you can take her speed in total and also doubles up as a uh, as a damage booster because she is a speed scaling dps um some utility that she gained is that she gains ap down this is through her passive whereby if power reserve expires she gains ap if the whole team has power reserve and it's it's removed via them being attacked she'll get 100 percent ap this is only at r2 though at r0 it's mostly 20 percent ap from you attacking her and then she has some damage reduction of course from the power reserve itself um some of her core strength is she is a great single target damage dealer she she has damage reduction via power reserve ap gain via power reserve mechanics and she is a speed scaling damage dealer um those are normally great because you never think about getting speed and attack you just get speed and then that serves as your attack one of her core weaknesses is that she needs r2 to be functional standard espers that are good at r0 broken at r2 um she is bad at r0 good at r2 which means she becomes broken at a much later, much later stage so she is dependent on r2 to on on resonances as a whole to be usable and she lacks any useful debuffs and this is more of a comment for pve stuff like defense break and attack break stuff that helps her deal more damage she just she just doesn't have it stuff that helps her teammates deal more damage she just doesn't have it um which makes her she's gonna lack something as little like a, as a stun is what makes sender so viable in tower modes because he ap controls down and stuns while she is the opposite i feel but um, yeah that's about what she brings a pretty simple as per as a whole let's move into resonances and discuss why it is so good for her so looking at valeria's resonances the most important one here is the second one basically her passive grants all allies power reserve at the end of valeria's turn right pretty good because if if valeria moves puts power reserve on everyone and then they get aoe hit she'll get another turn because she gains 20 percent ap for every power reserve lost this is 20 times 5 which is 100 percent so she'll get full ap and it'll be her turn once again so this is actually the, the crux of it not only is she protecting everyone they'll be taking half damage as a whole she will then get another turn and then reapply the power reserve and then they'll be protected 
and she'll also continue dealing damage with her basic skill which is also buffed by the snake buff um um the rise of four is actually pretty good because it says if there's an ability on cooldown uh, namely her third skill she gains plus 20 speed this means she'll gain her turn much quicker in addition right this is also a damage buff to her it's plus 20 attacks so just plus 20 speed so that's why it's so good the r6 there valeria has a 30 percent chance of getting an extra turn this is works well because the more turns that she gains from people removing power reserve her gaining xp she has a chance of 30 percent getting an extra turn using her first skill first skill and then third skill and then moving so that's literally how you're supposed to play her single target always moving gaining ap and protecting allies and i think her resonances are very clean she's very resonant dependent um as i mentioned in the what she brings section so her resonances are very good but they're essential and that's the problem we don't want essential resonances we want ones that push an s bar forward this resonances just make it feel like these things should be part of a kit especially with the current um power scaling but with that being said let's go discuss some of the build and what you really want to build her as um with some of the builds of course um i have no showcase today i'm trying this thing where i'm trying to make these videos a lot quicker and i figured out that i'm um, just showing previous build doesn't really help in making this thing quick what is important is the stats you need to focus on the thresholds and the possible sets and as you can see there i think speed is top priority because it's not only a way that she can take first turn uh, move fast throughout is a way she can deal damage and speed scaling anything that scales us on attack you would like for it to crit and do more right so something like uh crit crit damage of course it's a natural second priority and you don't mind seeing attack at the end she doesn't really have any deep debuffs not even an ap down um she has a speed down but it's like <laughs> you're not gonna search accuracy for that so if accuracy is there i guess you take it but you take attack before you take accuracy because it's just to land that one speed down on her third skill which is null void like you do nothing with that as we look at the st thresholds um these pluses here are more the ones that you get from gear so the green stats on your the green stats on your on your character screen right <clears throat> not the black ones um basically about 1.5 attack really works about 120 1, 160 speed again this is the lower ends basically just take your sender build and put it on her and then it works 85 percent crit of course after you know everything the crit that she gains from awakenings and gear it should be 85 add with the base 15 to give her a total of 100 percent crit rate and about plus 150 speed or 150 crit damage on top of the 150 crit damage that she has i think this always serves as a good damage benchmark in terms of sets that you can that can help you hit all of this especially this high speed threshold go as fast as you can 180 you know just go fast she doesn't even need to move before your supports she can no she doesn't need to move after your support she can even move before your support because she actually does not need them speed set really works crit rate to just sort of round it up if you don't have the stats but for pvp i would say speed set and immunity to make sure that if you're out spared at least she can still move and then put the protection and you know continue moving on um this one definitely works because uh, the more turns she gets the more chance she applies um you know the power reserve stuff the more times you can use a first skill which is damage buffed the more times you can deal damage right so it's one of those dps that works well on astro and if you are lacking in some damage if you're trying to go big damage right you can stack up some crit damage with thor set and maybe the attack set if you can get the speed to that point um for pve um if you are good with crit rate i would go for avatar for sure because then you are able to counter um, especially if she's like r6 then you're able to counter and then you can steal a turn with a 30 percent chance not only that um you can counter and deal um enhanced damage and it's a fine for her to be countered because she has a damage mitigation so um yeah you don't you're not scared of her being attacked so that's about it in terms of gear now let us move to her pve scoring
when we look at her pve score we can see it is kind of bleak and it's mostly because she is a single target flow asper <clears throat> right dps at that so um stuff like sonic rift of course she's already out um stuff like the towers all of these towers right the reason why sender works and she doesn't is because sender has a stun in her in him <laughs> and she has no stun sender has ap control so you can control the bosses there and then you're able to clear temporal tower and infinity tower in this fashion right she doesn't have the cc she has damage reduction the problem with the damage reduction is that um in these tower modes you don't want the opponent to move you're either stunning them or you're cleaving them or you are ap controlling them basically you don't want them to move and deal damage most of us don't even bring support into these um into these dungeons you know like these um <clears throat> these tower modes q miracle temporal tower infinity tower calamity island um she does not help at all in any of these and that's why i gave her a global one there a pep and fafnir completely unusable as well <laughs> it's kind of sad uh yeah. wind there um negative affinity this one she's not a multi-hitter so she does just doesn't work there event trials you gotta need to event and story you basically are going to need it r2 to give everyone protection but at r0 she's just a really bad sender i guess <laughs> and anomaly really these espers are made for anomaly so it's kind of fair rating there let's look at some of her best um you know performance uh, she's a flow single target dps so she'll be good in the sonic miracle the inferno sonic miracle um in the flow sonic miracle she's just the standard dps in chronos um at ro she only gives herself the damage reduction so she's just a standardly good dps uh she 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 um she replaces the azure dragon uh xiao xiao lin xiao jin yeah that, that dude um at r2 she just becomes much better because she then starts putting um damage protection to everyone which means everyone can last a bit longer in the shadow gale for desolate lands as well as the shadow stream in the shadow gale she will continuously be putting this power whatever right which means the text from the um there's a mechanic whereby you either need to remove debuffs or put buffs to get more ticks like 18 times multiplier she is a dps that can help with that as well in shadow stream she works well because she just takes so many turns especially if the shadow stream like attacks your people at r2 and then she starts gaining ap and it's like always her turn right so um yeah in terms of forbita she doesn't really bring the deep the debuffs that are needed in forbita this is defense break attack break um unhealable which is disease as well as um unhealable and sleep remember this forbita can be slept she doesn't really bring any of that so she's just a standard dps you bring her just to deal a lot of damage because she's gonna gain a lot of turns and she's fast but she doesn't really bring anything above that and then here the damage reduction is really gonna help to everyone because this one deals damage and the more you survive the more damage you can deal so um, i feel like she's just gonna be a good dps in this one and at ro of course she's just gonna protect herself so she's gonna be fine um that's about it in pve not really something you can like write home about a lot of like negatives in like places where we farm resources but just um moderately high positives and that one five <laughs> in in sentinel hunt so um yeah look at this and see where you can use her obviously for most of us unusable but um yeah that's about it for a pve score let's go look what the devs think she's good at so we got it we got to what the devs think you know how do we use valeria the dev says valeria is a fighter as but who excels at taking a weapon action and deals single target damage wind some of the comment that sets for her are wind real fire and avatar sets i agree with the wind and avatar definitely good can also want to be such a speed attack if you want of course i i will need that but attack will put more of the damage because you want speed crew crit damage to deal the damage before it. 
as I already mentioned. Recommended allies basically supports that help buff her damage. Okay. And then they say she is good in Ritual Miracle Chronos. That's fair. Sentinel Hand Forbiter. Bro, really? <laughs> I guess. Does let Lens Shadow Stream? Okay. Sonic Rift Infernus. Bro, you're gonna put Sonic Rift Infernus as one of the reasons to show someone for this lady. That is mental, man. One of the reasons you should summon is a Sonic Miracle. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, like you could have just put anything here. Like, not this is not enticing anyone to summon boys. But yeah, that's what the devs think. Um, certainly they are correct. But I do have a different opinion about her PvP viability. So let's just move on to her PvP rating. Here we are, we made it. PvP rating. You see the uh, 5 in warm-up match. I think she's gonna be good at R6. I think if you have an Astro Witchcraft or even speed and she's like moving fast, she's gonna be great for the aggro playstyle. Right? <clears throat> like Sander is very good. She will be very good as well. Same as Mateo. Any speed scaling DPS is very good for any aggro player or anyone who's just trying to build deal a lot of damage and she comes with damage reduction which means the bruiser teams that like just try to cleave um like reverse cleave you know like you fail to kill them so they kill you will find that they will find doing that very hard because she will have um this damage reduction on not only your support but also your dps like brewster and stuff like that right they will have that minus 50 percent damage dealt to them is pretty good um at base she just protects herself so she's just the standard dps in terms of point wall same thing even below average at r6 she becomes average because because point wall you would rather just cleave if you're moving that fast right <laughs> uh, it's just what it is in hollow battle you can use her because hollow battle is 3v3 you can just normally people have like that single target you can just go and nuke one and now it becomes a 3v2 and you are in the driving seat right so really just works better for you in total and in this one as well i put fours in defense for this one because i she's a gacha this is knockout by the way she's like a gacha moment <laughs> you know you, you go into her and she's like the fastest and she puts protection and you're just not able to kill them and knockout is either you live long enough or you just keep right and she helps in living long enough she's, and she also deals major damage with the speed scaling and stuff like that right so she's just, that's my rating for her in pvp pretty fair i think rated her better than in pve let us move on to my closing thoughts about valeria so closing thoughts about valeria is she good no she's kind of a mediocre as but you can look into her future viability probably but um, the fact that she's being currently overshadowed by Brewster and um, Embla, which are happening like as we speak right now, um, just makes it kind of hard for you to forget those, forget those two and go for her. In fact, it's it, it also sours because both Brewster and Embla are R2 Espers and she is also an R2 Esper. So just rather go for the ones that are tested, Brewster or Embla instead of her because she is really currently still a big question mark i think she is a question mark but more on she is still bad side um that's about it that's what i wanted to say about her she is kind of okay nothing special though better as plus exist already in the game but if you like what you see here please click a like comment and a subscribe and i will talk to you guys in the next video love you bye cheers guys